Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope all of you are in the middle and immersed in a great work week filled with very purposeful work. And our topic today is something that's really going to help you fill your week with purposeful work. What better thing to, to talk about with great purpose and intent than a topic of kind of infusing your own personal leadership with servant leadership. So I also wanna let you know, uh, back by popular request, that I am working on a resiliency series for our fans of the framework live in August. So the whole month of August will be all about you uh, and your resiliency, either how to role model uh, a more resilient lifestyle or uh, how to personally work on that. So check out August. Okay, that's uh, coming next week, obviously. And uh, but let's talk about servant leadership today. Okay, so remember the, the concept of servant leadership. It's not a new concept. Robert Greenleaf wrote the, the, you know, the model, the leadership model for servant leadership in 1970, right? Maybe some of you weren't even alive. And so, you know, what, what he talked about, though, was there needs to be a future state for leadership or at the time even a current state, and not many people listen to him, but, you know, something that turns the pyramid of power in leadership on its head, where leaders truly feel like they are there to serve the needs of others and to put the needs of others before their own needs. So I can't think of a better time when you really start to look at your leadership and really start to consider others' needs than when you have a brand new employee engagement survey that comes out, right? So that, that can be really, really daunting. Maybe your results weren't all that great. And so the concepts of servant leadership and how to infuse that in your own leadership, we could talk for years on that, right? So there's 10 base basic principles of servant leadership. But, you know, I really want to focus on something that I know that all of our partner leaders struggle with. And so I know that, you know, you and the fans of the framework as a leader probably struggle with this at all as well. So what if one of the questions, and all of you have this question on your employee engagement survey, and it's that question where it asks your employees if you are doing a great job um, investing in them. Uh, sometimes the question is stated, I feel my organization um, is a place where I can grow and develop both personally and professionally, or I uh, I work for an organization that uh, assists with my personal and professional growth and development. However it's worded, it's on everybody's survey because guess what? Researchers know, as well as you know, as well as we know, that employees now in workplaces today, you know, that is a key driver of engagement, that they want to know that they work for a place that cares about their personal and their professional growth and development, if you will, but essentially it's growth. So how do we merge the concept of servant leadership into really you know, beginning to show people that you are invested in their personal and professional growth and development. And you know, the reason why I wanted to focus on this question, because remember, fans of the framework and our, our Facebook Lives are all about you, and it is a question that Sue and I hear all the time from our, the organizations that we work with on a daily basis is, what does this question mean? What does it mean? Now, it could have several meanings, shouldn't it? And part of being a more servant, uh, a servant leader is finding out what they mean when they answer that question in a certain way. So let's talk about that. What if your employees answered that question because they truly feel as there's no opportunities for growth and development where you work and where you lead? 
Uh, maybe it's a small organization. Um, maybe you're the same age as everybody who works for you. So they're like, Psh, he or she ain't getting out of my way, right? There's no end in sight for this. I can't, I can't become a leader. Well, one of the things that we're going to talk about today is how do you get them to see leadership in other ways? How do you get them to see that being a leader is more than being the the boss? It's more than schedules and payroll. That actually that everyone in healthcare today is a leader. Okay, so whether you're working at the bedside or whether you're serving those that work at the bedside and have their hands on the patient, um, you're uh, everyone is a leader. So um, how how do we do this? How do we put this uh, first? You know, uh, you have to round on people to truly find out why they answered that question the way that they did. And I know that all of you might think, like, why are they continually focusing on rounding? Oh, my God, these girls will not shut up about rounding. It is key. We will never shut up about rounding. It is key to being a successful a uh, productive, efficient leader is rounding and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people to really develop relationships, part of being a servant leader, and see things from, from their viewpoint. So uh, Adam Grant, uh, I'm a huge fan of Adam Grant. I don't, I don't know if you've read his books, but his uh, latest release called Give and Take. He is a professor of business at Wharton University, also um, a speaker all over the country and very well respected in our industry for just knowing leadership. Says that those leaders that infuse some of their leadership style with servant leadership uh, uh, concepts and principles and really take those on truly are more productive and more widely respected by their employees that they truly are so how are you gonna do that right how are you going to do that well we already touched on rounding a little bit so if you get some results back on, you know, that with a lower score or a medium score or not an over the top score that we're uh, on any question actually, but today we're most specifically talking about investing in the growth and uh, development of others. And that is for both personal and professional growth. Because remember the employees of today, the employees of today, want to expand upon the things that that excite them personally their personal passions bring into the work workforce how can they do that okay and when when you do allow that to happen where you work guess what two things happen socialization and relationships uh, which is key to retaining those people that you've worked so hard to recruit and make your own. But, you know, rounding is really key to this. So ask the question during rounding. First of all, you know, bring the elephant out in the room. Say to the employee that you're rounding up, hey, got this survey back. Okay. And I mentioned last week at the staff meetings. And so I'm asking everyone this month a particular rounding question. What can we do? What can I do as your leader? What can we do in this organization? What can we do together, working together as a team in our department to uh, make you feel as though, you know, this is a, a place for you to grow personally and professionally? I really want to focus my leadership on that. What does that question mean to you? Okay. So some of your employees are going to say, well, Jane, the reason why I answered the question in that way, they will remember specifically that it was that important to them that they answered the question in a specific way. Okay. Or they'll say, hmm, I don't remember that question on the survey, but this is what that means to me. And their, their answers will be all over the board. It means that you're young and you ain't getting out of my way, or I don't see you going anywhere, so I can't be a leader. Um, and when they say that, then there's your opportunity to say, let me mentor you, right? Let me mentor you. That's what Sue did with me when she was the CNO and she was in my way, and I, she knew that my career aspirations were to be the CNO in a community hospital. She said, all right, let me mentor you. Um, 
she was not guaranteeing me the job when she vacated it at all because hello she mentored me for eight years so let me mentor you let me uh, invite you to meetings um, sign you up for webinars that I think look interesting assign you projects uh, they, that highlight your leadership ability and let you practice presenting in front of physicians, the board, uh, other department heads. Uh, let's make you the leader of an employee-driven team or a task force or a project, right? So there are all sorts of things and you, you need to let them know. I will mentor you. If this if truly that's what you want, let, let me mentor you, right? I would love to grow you as a leader. Or what if they they say, you know, I really, I really am really, really creative. I, I love the creative part of me, and there's no way for me to express that here. I had several employees say that to me. And I was like, hey, you know what? Uh, we have a service board in the in the lounge and in the staff lounge, and I suck at these boards. They're boring when I do them. There's just sheets of paper everywhere. Uh, will you use your creativity to make it beautiful and something that, that the rest of the staff really want to look at and read and it speaks to them instead of just a bunch of papers falling all over the place? And they're like, totally, I'll be in charge of that. Amen. Let's do it. Right? Maybe you have somebody who sees that, hey, we have a problem with socialization here and I'm kind of a chief party officer and you don't celebrate well, boss. Um, what, what are people personally passionate about? You only find that out through rounding. And when you ask the question specifically, how can we make sure that we're taking care of your personal and professional growth and development? You might ask it, what, where do you see yourself in five years? What, what personal goals do you have? How can I help you? Right? How can I help you? Well, I really want to work on this because it's not safe on Tuesday nights when this is happening. Yeah, whatever. Or I've always wanted to be a preceptor and you've never asked me. Okay? So round and ask the question. Round and ask the question. So uh, the second thing that you want to do is work shoulder to shoulder. That's the name of this Facebook Live is walk a mile in their shoes. Some of you may already do that. Some of you may work in organizations where you're still pulling shifts, where you're called upon to uh, care for patients or do the work when uh, others are not there to do it. That's okay, right? That's okay. It's different, however, when you specifically say to your, the, your employees, the people who work for you, I really want to work alongside you because I feel as though I hear you tell me that, that you're running into some barriers and challenges, but I can't really see it. I need to see it from your vantage point. I'll give you an example. When I was the CNO of, of my hospital, I heard registered nurses saying to me, we are spending way too much time charting. I knew what the national average was. I knew what it should be. I knew what ANA should, said it should be or what um, the American organization or the executive said that, you know, we need to have a system in place for, for nurses to be at the bedside and, and not sitting in front of a computer. So what is that? And I took a day. I, uh, I went to my, one of my highest performing nurses, Rochelle, and who I knew spent uh, as much time as she possibly could at the bedside of the patients, and that was just her. I had observed her work many times, and I said, I'm going to follow you around, and I'm going to watch you know, your workflow and do a live time study and how much time you spend documenting. And I found out that my registered nurses spent 37% of their day documenting too much, right? When the national average at that time was 25, it was too much. And I had to do something about it, right? So, but during that day, I was really open to hearing about the barriers and challenges, not just watching Rochelle work, but really listening and hearing from them 
you know, we want to be at the bedside, Jane. We know that that's what we are called to do. We, we know that that's where service excellence and quality work happens through these brains and these hands touching the patients. But we can't do it when you got us, you know, uh, doing four different fall assessments throughout the day. Okay. So what were the barriers and challenges? And not just from one person, but from many. And I called it my sacred service time, where I had to see for myself what, what, what was happening. You know, after I left the CNO role and was rounding, doing validation rounding on every inpatient every day uh, with a great team of leaders who helped me do that and make that happen, then I was able to see how people were working and the challenges that they faced. But when I was in a senior leadership role, I had to spend time every month on my calendar and I called it sacred service time. So uh, work shoulder to shoulder, take a, take a, a walk in their shoes. The third thing um, is connecting the dots. You likely have great opportunities already in your department uh, that you personally do as a leader and that your organization does. You likely have these things in place already, but your employees don't know about them. You know, a situation at our organization was, you know, we had tuition reimbursement that anybody who wanted to go back to school, you know, and if they didn't already have their bachelor's degree, it was paid for, right? And a lot of people, when I would round on them and ask that question about their personal personal and professional growth and development didn't know that we had that in place. So I had to connect the dots. First of all, you're connecting the dots by asking that rounding question. You know, hey, we scored kind of low on this question on our employee engagement survey. And, and I, I need to know the why. And I'm asking this question for the next month of everybody who works here. So you want to point out to employees, you're not the only one I'm asking this question of. I'm not personally pinpointing you and saying, hey, Christina Wilkins, why aren't you happy with your professional growth and development, right? Instead, I'm asking everyone. You're, one, you're a part of a team that I care about and I wanna ask everyone. So when you ask it and they say, well, you know, we don't have college tuition reimbursement. We, we never have education opportunities. I don't care what I get trained on. I just want to be trained. And then you can connect the dots for them. And you can say, well, did, did you know that there's, you know, the wellness team is sponsoring resiliency well, uh, webinars and, you know, they, they tape record these and you can go online and watch them and in your own spare time. So connect the dots for them. Okay, connect the dots. So um, I hope you learned some things that you can put in place to A, connect to the principles of servant leadership, but also how you overcome that question of as a leader, do you invest in the personal and professional growth of the people that you serve, right? Want to let you know what we got going on at Capstone Leadership this summer. Uh, Sue and I are working diligently to finish all eight modules of Capstone EDU so that at the end of them, you would have the opportunity to um, take part online through our app, Capstone EDU, um, and the entire framework of the standard work of leaders or our leadership bundle will be included in that. Uh, wait for the end of the summer. That is actually the end of September, uh, probably 1st of October. That will be available uh, to all of you. And uh, the other thing that, that we got going on is the greatness course. So if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, with Sue and I over a period of months and also connecting with us through live uh, webinars and um, learning how to set up our framework in your own scope of influence, go to the website, www.capstoneleadership.net and read all about the greatness uh, course. There's a cohort starting near you. Have a great day.